Jesse Brandon and I am a life cycle celebrant as well as an ordained minister and here on Epiphanies I get to bring my two loves together books and people so today we're going to be talking about Paul Coelho's book The Alchemist and uh, this book is just incredible he's one of the best-selling and most influential authors in the world and um, it's it's just I can't even begin to tell you about the book so I'm gonna let my guest tell you all about it. My guest today is Bunny Murphy. Bunny, so happy to have you here with me today. I'm so happy to be here, Jesse. Great. Now, let me tell them about you. So, Bunny was born and raised on her farm, Hawks Landing, and it was her childhood dream to own this farm and turn it into a safe, fun-loving experience for others to share. Um, Bunny's worked with adults and children for many years. She worked at the Berry Parent Center with Children's Aid, with children and young adults special needs, a horse day camp leader, and a horseback riding instructor. And at present, Bunny is the magi of her horse farm. There are eight horses, four rescues, three of her own, and one that belongs to her daughter. And uh, with the help of donations, this farm is a forever home to all horses that come here. Now, there is a uh, center there for meditation with the horses, and it is just absolutely incredible. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. I'm going to hand you that. And uh, I'm going to hand you the book. Okay. Now, Bunny, my usual first question, why did you choose this book? Because the book reminds me of me. Really? It really okay. does. Why is that? Because um, my whole life I've always had um, guidance. I've always had um, opportunities put in front of me to take or not to take. Um, they've always, always led me to where I am today. Um, and this story is about a little boy um, who was a shepherd and he had a dream and it was the dream to go to Egypt to see the pyramids. Well as a little girl my dream was to own the farm where I was born and raised on mm -hmm. and I've been through many trials and tribulations to get where I am and I'm on this farm today and just like Santiago he went through many trials and tribulations to get to see the pyramids and he did manage to get there um, and I managed to get to my farm yeah and both of us looking for our dream and through all this I found me you know mm -hmm. his hidden treasure he thought was going to be at the pyramids well it was because his hidden treasure was inside him right and he realized that when he got there and no different than myself through all the trials and tribulations in life, right. you know, no matter what they are, they always lead you on your personal legend, as Paul describes it in here. Yeah, always lead you back to self. Exactly. <coughs> Perfect. So have you had the opportunity to pass that on or to share your construct of, of that book with other people? Yes, I have. Um, through through the center, it's a self-discovery center. Mm -hmm. um, my horses are there to help with all the healing. Um, they're help to. They're there to help guide you, to lead you, um, in whatever direction you're going, mm -hmm. wherever you are, what level you are at. Um, so through meditation with the horses, people do come and they learn all about the personal growth. So you share that book with them while they're there. The knowledge that's in this book. The knowledge book. that's in the book. Exactly. Right. Okay. Um, All right. And have you, uh, is this your first copy or like me, have you loaned your books out to people? That yes. They, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I have read it many times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a beautiful book. Beautiful book. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's so much insight inside the covers of this book. Right. Is there a particular part that spoke to you that you'd like to read with it to us? or? Um, there is a... Um, I really loved where you know he talked about following your following the omens because the omens will lead you 
and guide you, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's the animals and the birds or whether it's numbers or letters mm -hmm. and people. So know? he calls them omens in the book. Yeah. We would call them perhaps signs. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and when you want something in life, he often says, you know, the universe conspires mm -hmm. to make sure you succeed in life. And that's something that's very important for people to remember, that you do have your guardian angels, your spirit guides, your teachers, your masters. They're all cheering you on. Mm -hmm. They want to see you. Now, yeah. I, I'm going to challenge you on that because yeah. I often think that the universe responds to what you ask for. And if you are unaware of what you're asking for and perhaps focusing on the hard situations in your life, what you get is more of that because that's what the universe hears. Now, I'm thinking that you don't, you don't subscribe to that same theory, so. I do, mm -hmm. and I hear what you say. But having firsthand experience through all these, um, you wanna call them traumas, tragedies, or whatever, I was played a victim for many, many years, not knowing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I was playing a victim. Yeah. Um, and I had all those, um, you know, you want to call the negative thoughts, you want to call depression, anxiety, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I also knew that I had cheerleaders from behind. They were help. They were there. Yeah. They didn't leave me stranded. You know, they were here. They, they were the ones giving me the signs or the omens mm -hmm. to point me in this direction. An opportunity would unfold. Mm -hmm. And I really do believe they put the opportunity in front of me. They don't leave you. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you're thinking, whether you're in depression or anxiety or negative thoughts, they don't leave you. Right. They open the doors. I think they're merely waiting for you to give them some sort of indication that you're asking for help or that you're uh, open to, you know, whatever they can give you. I believe that everybody is asking for help. Everyone. You know, if you're, in de you're a depressed person or if you have anxiety, you have thoughts running through your head you know, praying to God or praying to who you believe in to please help me, mm -hmm. right? They're listening. Mm -hmm. So I really do believe that everybody is asking for help in their own way. Yes. And that's why your cheerleaders are there to help you move on. Mm-hmm. True. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> I'm sorry, you looked down at that. Was there something there in, in yes, the book? Yes, there was. Um, I'm just trying to find it. Um, the, one of the things that he says is the closer one gets to realizing their personal legend, your personal journey, the more the personal legend becomes their true reason for being. As well, the closer you get, the harder it gets. And I totally believe that. Mm -hmm. It does get tough. It does get harder. But my advice to everyone is just keep going, keep going, never ever give mm -hmm. up. Because you're tested. Yeah. All the tests you go through, it's to make you stronger. Yeah, I think know? it's, you know, that saying, I don't know who said it, but it's always darkest before the dawn, is absolutely true. Correct. Because as you're going through your journey, when you're coming to that, uh, I like to call them epiphanies, of course, yeah. but as you're coming to that place where it's going to become clear to you or, or the way will become clear, it does get really hard. Are you that dedicated to what you want? Exactly. Do you believe? Yes, mm -hmm. and just be patient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had a hard time with that. <laughs> Patience? No. Yes, I did too. <laughs> um, there was another part, but you can learn. Hmm. <laughs> I guess it wasn't meant to. Oh, okay. Yes. In the story, the, the little boy talked about the intuition is really a sudden immersion of the soul into the universal current of life. Mm. And this is where the histories of all people are connected. I love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we are able to know everything because it is written there. And I, and I really personally believe that. We yeah. do know everything. Mm -hmm. You just need to tap into it. It's in there. Yeah. It's there for us to tap into. Mm -hmm. And as you go along your journey and you move forward in life, you open that up. It mm -hmm. gets open more and more, and you do follow it. I call it being in the zone or in the flow. Exactly. And, uh, and that's exactly it. The more you're aware of that, the more you're in it yeah. and can open yourself up to it, and then it's true. Everything can be known because it's, it's all inside of us. That's, that's so. right. You know, and everybody has their own words, you know, mm -hmm. for what they call their journey or what they call who they believe in or what they call their tragedy or you know because mm -hmm. every one of us is so unique do you find that the more um 
the, uh, how can I say this, the more conscious I become, the more aware of the words I use for things I am. Um, because um, when I talk about the things that I've gone through, the traumas that I've gone through in my own life, mm. I used to wax eloquent about how horrible everything was, and now I'm very aware that I'm A, re-traumatizing myself, and B, calling it back to me. The memory of it becomes now. And so I try to be very clear about my language when I'm talking about um, particularly yes. the past. Yes, and that's very important. Mm -hmm. um, I look now at my past. I had a beautiful life. I really, really did. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. could I say that 20 years ago? No, because I again then I was the victim. Mm -hmm. But now I look at my life and I think, wow, you know, there were so many good memories, and that's what I recall now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, anything that has happened to me in my life, I have forgiven those people. You know, they did their best. Mm -hmm. Just like I'm doing my best in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as you do your best, that's what's important. Right. That's what is so important because every last one of us are so worthy. Mm -hmm. So worthy of whatever we want in this world. Now, can you define for me and for my viewers, <clears throat> what do you mean by doing your best? Doing your best? Yeah. Well, I like to believe, and I do believe, that we are perfect just the way we are at that particular time in our life. Um, so no matter what you do, you know, um, in your own eyes and in your own heart, what you do, that is your best because you didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, some people, like I grew up thinking I was a, you know, a terrible mom. And yes, I'm sure there is lots of things my daughter would say, wow, yes, mom, you were terrible. You did that, this, this, and this. And that is possibly true. But that's where I was back then. Mm -hmm. And that's all I knew. <coughs> you know, mm -hmm. I, um, I grew up without a mother, so I didn't have a role model to teach my, my child to help raise her. Mm -hmm. So I did my best. Mm -hmm. I did my best with whatever role models I had and what I knew how. Until you reach a spot in your life and it's, you look at it and I think this is where I reach a spot in my life. I wanted to find out what love was all about. Mm -hmm. That was my key. I wanted to fill this heart of mine that had been shut down for many years, fill it with love. Mm -hmm. And once you fill your heart with love, there's no going back. There isn't. And you cannot say anything bad about your past. Right. And you cannot say anything bad about people in life. Mm -hmm. You can't. Mm -hmm. There's no judgment. When you love, when you have love in your heart and it's filled with love, there isn't any judgment. Yeah. There isn't any judgment. You yeah. know? Again, could I have said this 20 years ago? No. It's been a long, hard road mm -hmm. to get to where I am. Mm -hmm. I am so grateful for all the lessons that I have been taught and I have learned myself. Um, and like I say, once you're on the road, there's no going back. Mm -hmm. There isn't. I, yeah, absolutely, because when you start to look at where you are now, mm -hmm. as you're going through the, the rebirthing of who you are, it, it, can, it can be pretty hard because you've got yes. <coughs> so to look at, at your stuff and what you've been doing and how it isn't working for you. But I would rather have that journey than be the victim that I once was too and and, and not have the knowing <laughs> because uh, it just is so different. It's it, it's better to know. It's better it, to be awake. It is. Life is so much more beautiful. Yeah. You know, you, you wake up in the morning and it's like you hear the birds sing. Mm -hmm. You see that sun rise. You know, you hear the wind. It's like that is what life is all about. I absolutely love your pictures of the farm in the early morning. It's just incredible. I go on Facebook and look for your stuff because oh, it's well, thank just, you. yeah, well, because you have a really great perspective. I mean, you can say, okay, here's a picture of my horses, or you can say, look at the beauty of these free animals. And it's exactly. just the way you say things that describe your pictures. I can feel and hear the joy well, that that's you good have. to know that. Yeah. That that's how you see it. So, so tell me about the farm. How, how, how do, um, how does it work there? Well, um, when people are called to come to the farm, you know, how they get there, 
You know, they may see something on Facebook or word of mouth, and usually it's word of mouth. Um, they're there, and they come there for personal growth. Mm -hmm. You know, the horses can help them through the depression or the anxiety, um, their traumas, their tragedies. One thing with the horses, you cannot lie to them. You cannot lie. Mm -hmm. When you're in their presence, um, they know exactly what's going on in your head, what's going on in your soul. Mm -hmm. They feel the energy. They know what is there. And I had one lady come, and she has, had come quite a few times, and she was originally terrified of horses, terrified. The horses were very gentle. They really were. Mm -hmm. But then the woman got very courageous, and you know, and her comments were always, she's lost the fear of horses. She's <laughs> lost the ho fear of horses. Mm -hmm. I personally knew that that was different. The horses definitely knew that that was not true. And what they, what they would do is they would start to play around in front of her. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. When you come and see my horses, they're so metal, <coughs> mellow. They're like in a meditative state. Mm -hmm. But for this particular lady, because she had come forth and said she had no more fear of the horses, the horses knew different. They started to play around her, act up. Well, right? Mm -hmm. That set the lady back. Mm -hmm. Because they want to bring out everything inside of you mm -hmm. that you no longer need. They want you to shed all those emotions that are that are hindering you. Mm -hmm. They want to show you your true beauty, and the only way you can is get rid of all that garbage, get mm -hmm. rid of all that stuff inside of you. Yeah. So they will do whatever they can to keep at you and mm -hmm. keep at you. You know, I can say that I've lost all my fears and whatnot, but that's a lie. Yeah. You know, and they will show me. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, wake up call. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, some people have <coughs> come to feel the unconditional love that you can get from a huge animal. Healing comes from all animals in life, mm -hmm. nature, trees, everything. But with, because of a horse, a horse is so huge. They have such a huge body mass. Mm -hmm. So their energy vibrates 10 times, 20 times the size of a dog, mm -hmm. right? Dogs are great healers. Horses are magical healers. Yeah. It's very mystical. Okay, so why why would you say, it, like, do you see a difference between, for instance, you mentioned dogs and horses. You say dogs are, are good healers, horses are magical. Why? Because is it your connection to your horses that makes them magical, or what do you know? It is mine, my connection as well. It is also, I do believe, the horses are coming forward mm -hmm. in, this time, in this shift they're coming forward and because of their size they vibrate at such a high energy they're coming forth to help the human beings mm -hmm. and it is because of their size for one you know um, a horse has a huge heart and a huge energy field mm -hmm. and it's been proven you know yeah. scientifically proven that um, our space around us may 10 feet mm -hmm. you know that unless we radiate it Yes. We can expand our energy, mm -hmm. but just standing, our energy is about 10 feet around us. Horses, they can just be standing, and it radiates 50 to 100 feet mm -hmm. all around, you know? So before you even enter my farm, they already know you're coming. Yeah. yeah. They're very intuitive. Yeah. Just like humans are. They're mm -hmm. very intuitive. But the biggest thing is <coughs> they teach you to be in the present moment. Mm. Mm -hmm. to just be forget the past forget the future just be with them mm -hmm. you know and that's how that's the biggest biggest thing that you that the horses try and teach us yeah get out of your past yeah. you know and don't go way off into your future just enjoy today enjoy what you have in your life everything I, you have in your life and just enjoy it today yeah I really found that experience too because as you know when I came I, I told you I'm terrified of horses from my own history with them and I didn't realize that it wasn't the horses that were bad, it's that they could sense how terrified I was. I, I'd had an incident when I was very young and so it just left a mark. And I was there for a Qigong class, so we were sitting in chairs. And it just amazed me because when we first walked out there, they, they gave me my space. 
And then they started to come to me, and they just stood beside me. And you think, okay, what are they doing? They're crowding me. No, they're giving you an opportunity to just be, to exactly. just be with them. And I love your little pony because yes. uh, she, uh, he just came and, and he leaned on me, leaned me on the back of the chair and just leaned on me. And it was a constant reminder that he was there. And uh, I just, I loved it so much. So I'm over my fear. No, <laughs> no, I'm still, I admit it, I'm still afraid of, of the size of them, the magnitude. And I think that that's just something that you would need to maybe be around them constantly to, to ease that fear and to have yeah. them show you that they won't hurt you un unless they need to protect themselves. And even at that point, they're not hurting you, they're just pushing no. you away mm -hmm. so that they're okay. No. Um, the horses that I have on my farm, they are special. They really, really are. Mm -hmm. um, none of the horses on my farm are rode. Nobody rides them. They get to run free. Um, like I say, I have four rescue horses there as well. Um, two of them are used in the therapy sessions and the meditation sessions. Um, is Murphy still out in Oh, the yes. Yeah. Yeah, oh. she's still there. She's still there, so big and strong. You know, she's quite the... Um, she's part of the farm. You yeah. Know? Um, but yeah, when in their presence, you really need to learn to listen. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have our thoughts, right? And that's where I we all know everything we need to know. Mm -hmm. But do we listen? Mm -hmm. No. So when you say you have to learn to listen, who are you listening to? Yourself. Okay. You're listening to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, when you listen, and because you're in that mass energy with all those there's six horses that are in there when you're in that and you're vibrating at a higher level because they help to bring you up listen to your thoughts Be and all I always say listen to the very first thought you have because that is the right one mm -hmm. but a lot of people they'll get the thought and it's the correct one and then they say well that can't be true no no I no I can't be it can't be it right mm -hmm. and I always say listen to your very very first thought can you give me a story about that so that people understand what you mean by your first thought? Well, you could be sitting out in the herd, okay, and um, you, you know, people, the horses will help you to get your answer. Um, so maybe the question is, you, should I quit my job, okay? Should I quit my job? And you already have the answer. As soon as you said that, should I quit my job? Well, obviously, the very first answer is yes, you should, because you're thinking that mm -hmm. you don't like, you're not enjoying your job. So you'll hear that thought, and the horse may have a, may even come over as the moment you thought that question may come over and push you. And I always say to pay attention to those. Mm -hmm. And so you've heard the thought, yes, you should, but then what comes up? <gasps> How am I going to support my family? How am I going to pay my mortgage? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? And it's like, nope. I'm not. Fear steps in the road. Fear really alters our whole life, you know, if you allow it. Mm -hmm. um, so, like I say, the horses will do something to help you answer your questions. You know, they could stand over there and they could just kind of all of a sudden drop their head for an in, you know, with a no, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so you really have to be aware of your own thoughts and watch, watching the horses to see what you get from their movements. Is yes. that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. And it's just, you don't have to know anything <coughs> about horses. You mm -hmm. just need to watch them, you know, because mm -hmm. they could be standing on the other side of the arena and all of a sudden you're thinking of something, right? You know, maybe you're having a tough time with your daughter or your son or something like that and you're looking for answers and all of a sudden one of the horses will just turn around and look at you. You know, so you make a connection with them. Mm -hmm. Make a connection with them. Look into their soul. Make a heart connection with them. And you will hear. You will hear. And you'll get clarification mm -hmm. and knowledge on whatever the issues you have, you mm -hmm. know. Um, like I say, sometimes it's just being in, the, being in close to the animal, close mm -hmm. to the horse. Mm -hmm. So what is the name of of the farm like I know but I want uh, it's Hawks Landing a self-discovery center a self-discovery center yes that's, because it that. is it's where you know yeah you, I guess that's where I discovered myself mm -hmm. 
and you know like I had help all along the way like I say it's from people from my horses from my spirit guides you know my ancestors they've helped me along to find my true authentic self mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now what does it look like a session there at the farm um, so when people first come we go into a, especially now it's a heated room um, that's where Yay. we <laughs> exactly because it can be, it can be chilly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we go into the meditation room and um, I lead a guided meditation just to bring everybody down into you know get rid of all your issues from today and whatnot before we go see the herd mm -hmm. um, then we go in to see the herd um, I do have a white picket fence that's kind of separates the herd from the people you have your choice. You can stay behind that fence or you can come be brave and courage and come across that fence and join the herd. The herd, um, they don't have halters or anything on, they're free. Um, so the chairs are sitting in the middle of the arena and we all just take a, take a seat. Sometimes you'll have your back to the horses and that can be a little intimidating and frightening. Um, but the horses are also gentle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they will come and they will go and stand beside whoever really needs the help that day. Right. You know, some people think, oh, the horses never ever came to me. It's not that they didn't come to you. Their energy was there for you. Mm -hmm. You know, they are helping. But there is some people that really need even a more of a push, more of a, a, a healing. And they'll come and stand. And I always say, yes, you can pet the horses if you want. Not a problem. But I also do suggest when they do come and they stand right beside you or they'll put your head right on your lap, let them be because sometimes you start patting them or they might go away mm -hmm. but just to enjoy the connection that you've got going on with the animal mm -hmm. and to really be in the present moment at that time mm -hmm. because you're going to hear <clears throat> so when I was there for a meditation we came as a private group do you do you do that often yes. like I know you have the uh, the Thursday nights where people can come and occasionally you do Sundays or we, do you uh, always do Sundays now Sunday through afternoon. the winter I do okay yeah all right and then there's also the opportunity for people to oh yes to, to, come, to come book a group session um, I work with Wendat, I work with Community Living. Um, they bring their groups to mm -hmm. the farm. So yes, anybody that wants to come as a group, mm -hmm. by all means, okay. give me a call. That is so awesome. Thank you so much for being with us today, Bunny. I really appreciate your time. I know the herd is calling you home. So uh, again, thank you. And thank you to my viewers for dropping into Epiphanies. I hope you enjoyed our time today with Bunny Murphy of Hawks Landing, a self-discovery center. Uh, go and enjoy the herd and, uh, and uh, bask, <coughs> bask in their energy. Thank you so much for dropping into Epiphanies. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Pre